The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Terramina. Welcome to OAA Now. Here I'm Sammy Terramina, blogger of the Dragons Insider, blogger of Inside the OAA, and one of the hosts of Between Terminas and Orient Neighborhood Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice and also on SoundCloud and uh, my co-host here, Ian, it's been a month. Uh, it, I, yes, I'm back. Yes. Uh, a lot going on here at Owen TV in the last month. Mm hmm Getting back to normal notice. Yeah. Uh, mask-free. Mask-free. Which is a good deal. Very I got my first thing. shot coming on Wednesday. Beautiful. You're good to go, right? Yep. So, uh, yeah, we're excited. It's a little bit of normalcy coming oh, back yeah. coming back to uh, Owen TV here. Mm hmm and, and the show. And the show. I mean, like, and Ian, of course, um, you got some news to talk about, of course, with the um, with the um, podcast. Yeah, yeah. So um, during the you know the COVID and the whole pandemic thing, ON TV had to retool the way we did business, mm -hmm. right? I mean, staff was working from home. We were working out of our basement, still trying to run a TV station, you know, with twenty four seven programming. Working with you guys in the podcast Calling and in. all of our vol uh, our volunteer producers like yourself. And over the course of the year, we learned a lot about live streaming and different applications and what we can do. So, yes, we the show looks and sounds exactly the same, but we've added a new feature. It is YouTube Live. So really? YouTube Live, we've been fiddling with it for some time. It's given us some troubles with some of the systems we have in place. But now we know that uh, with experimentation and a variety of other uh, situations we've gone through with YouTube Live, we are now – Live streaming OAA now. Yes. Live on Mondays at 10 a.m. And then 10 a.m. is when we always do it on Mondays. Correct. And we have for years. Yes. And so now it will be live on YouTube. Yes. And to watch it, you head on over to OrionOnTV.org, click the Watch Live button, scroll to the bottom, and hit stream. And it, I will it's have a right link, there. I will have a link to this <laughs> on my blog at SammySemiColonTermina.blogspot.com if you want to get um. More information on that. Yeah. We've had a lot of districts released lately. Oh, course. there's so much information. So mm -hmm. I haven't seen you. Like you said, we've seen each other in passing. We chatted online and, mm -hmm. you know, emails and stuff. But there's a lot going on. And I feel like I'm I'm like uh, one of the listeners uh, tuning in today mm -hmm. uh, to sit there and go, Sammy, what's been going on? I've been out of the loop for so long. How was your 4th of July? Oh, um, mine was pretty good. It was hot. Yeah. Um, I, I had some yard work I wanted to do, but it didn't get done because it was so toasty. So pretty much uh, stayed in the air conditioning, played some music, you know, hung out with my family, and it was really nice. I had life uh, life of adventures up north <laughs> in Port, up in Caseville. I mean, like. Yeah, you were dodging some twisters, eh? Yeah, I had to dodge a twister um, in Port Austin, obviously. Um, heart and condolences go to the um, Vic, to the um to um everybody up there in Port yeah, Austin. Yeah, that was impacted by was impacted the tornado. By the yeah. EF2 tornado. Um it was about 4 miles north of where I was at and um it was just Yeah. It was nuts. It was crazy. I mean yeah. like we lost power for about 5 minutes and then got it back and then I know a lot of people in Port Austin they lost power. Um and lost some power lost, and lost belongings, lost a barn. barn went off. A, a, um, a roof the went roof off. Ripped up. A, 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 I it, saw the picture. It uh, was. It was pretty wild. It was wild. It was. Yeah. It was really wild, especially the um, a viewer who um, filmed the tornado off fifty on um, fifty three. Um, it was just really? that was insane. Well, and we heard too, and you can confirm this or not. Uh, tornado sirens did not go off for you guys. We here on Canyon was not under, not under a tornado warning. Sirens did not yeah. go off. Um. So, you know, so so that just says if there's severe weather or you see thunderstorms and things, just be cautious. Be because cautious. You, you might know, not you can't, know you when can't it's trust coming. the siren. You can't trust. You cannot trust the sirens. I mean, like said, so if you, you know, hear it, you take cover. Do what you hear you it, know. take cover. But you know, but you just got to be vigilant. You know, you especially around vigilant. the big lakes and that oh, sort of yeah. thing. Oh yeah, especially aware. you know, be aware. Be yeah. be aware. But other than that, I mean, like it was hot up there. It was. We had days where it was less humid. Yep. Now it's humid today. Yeah, it's sticky. Um, it is. And thinking sticky. of the athletes, right? So last week was a dead period for some of the sports. Mm -hmm. We know track and field or cross country. It was a dead, dead, dead week. Mm -hmm. And they're back at it this yep. week. Yep. And then there's some uh, that are on the dead this week. I know the MHA offices are closed, which means um districts are not going to be released this week. So okay. unfortunately, but 
But we do have the volleyball districts up. They're on my blog at Sammy Semicolon Termina Blogspot.com. Already. Um, already. Um, I got my insight and everything on that. So if you want to take a look, volleyball fans, um, it is on there as well. Um, a lot to talk about this week. Um, obviously. I mean, <laughs> but um, Well, it's the well, the off season, right? A lot of moves, a lot of changes, a lot of different things. A lot things. of changes, a lot of different things, especially, you know, you're looking at uh, football with football right now, you got a lot of seven on seven going yeah. on. Um I've heard from, I've heard about West Bloomfield, how they've been. I've heard about North Farmington, how they've been. Yep. Um, heard about um, Lake Orion, how they've been. Um, you know, I mean, like, but I haven't heard, you know, how each team has, you know what I mean? Like, you yep. know, all 20 of all 21. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. So that's really but, interesting. But this is the time where you start going, okay, this is, I like this time of year. Mm-hmm. Because uh, your projections you start putting lists together. We start, I've been doing that, actually. I mean, we, I'm well, starting. Well, we start spe- speculating on, <clears throat> mm-hmm. okay, what's the new look uh, Stony Creek going to be like? Yep, what's the that's new, the story. New look West Bloomfield. New look West Bloomfield going to look like. What yep. about Clarkston? Cl- what about Lake Orion? What about Oxford? Um, what about Southfield? I mean, like, what yeah. about, um, you know, then you got well, Berkeley. What new, about new Far- faces what of What about players? Farmington? What about Rochester? I mean, Absolutely. like, what about Berkeley? I mean, like, you know, Bloomfield Hills. I mean, Pontiac. You know what I mean? I mean, the, you, I don't think he saw this, but Pontiac football, the Pontiac Athletic Department, released a um, a Twitter um, post on their new football field. Really? They're getting a new football field. They're, bu- at, they're actually building one. They're building one at the high school. Really? So, and they sent out, they sent out, like, um, if you look at the Pontiac at High School Athletic Department okay. um, Twitter page, you're, you'll see, like, a new multi-purpose field on there. I responded on that, and I said it was awesome. Awesome. You know, it is it is so beautiful. I mean, the end zones are purple. Um, <laughs> well, that's their color is purple yeah, and purple silver, and right? silver, Purple, silver, and black. I mean, like, but I was really, really happy for, for um, Pontiac um, that they got the um, – I mean, like, I'll send you the link on that, Ian. I'll send it to okay. you. You know, it is it is so beautiful. I mean, like. Well, that's, you know what? But that is also progress. Mm-hmm. That is progress for that program, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, they were going down to the historic field to play, correct? Is right, it, Wisner. Wisner, right. So they were going down there. That's been revamped. It looks really nice. Mm-hmm. But it's not like a home well, yeah, for Pontiac, the they have to travel. You know what I mean? They have to travel. Everywhere. Whereas, we're, everywhere. whereas now, you know, with this new field, that they're getting i mean like it, it i mean like it is absolutely beautiful i i mean the field they've uh it's a multi-purpose field it's a turf field um and i know this has been in the works for a long time it is beautiful just beautiful i mean like i mean like it, i mean like um what they've done i mean i'd like director lee montgomery um has done a fantastic job with the, you know, with Pontiac. I mean, like building, you know, giving them, you know, the, 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 the best, tools, the tools and, the things and everything, they need to you know? Yeah. Yep. And he's, he's done a really good job about that. Yeah. You know, now I'm curious to see how their football team's going to look. I mean, especially <laughs> that have, they've won 10 games and, 10 years you know yeah. that's bad i mean that's not good and coaching stability and coaching stability so that's a big kind question there so yeah. you know and i but, know but i have a feeling that is a step in the right direction well, right? It, is. it is because not only that but it, it helps it's not just a football field but i'm sure it's a soccer field yep. lacrosse, lacrosse field, field right? yep yep they put it, yep the cross track. track's gonna be new track will be on there um I'm curious to see where they're going to put the chopper pit at. Um, <laughs> of but um but it's a it's a beautiful yeah. beautiful it's a I'm, well, well that's awesome. Did, did you see the renderings of the drawings or I saw the drawings and I've they've sent like um photos up um if you want to take a look at it I will send a link out there um for for the listener for the viewers obviously um yeah. it is a really beautiful field that Pontiac um Pontiac has. I mean like and um you know, and I am really, really happy for them. And really happy. And programs like Pontiac or struggling programs, it's it's amazing how new facilities could re-energize it. 
It could, you right? know. Let's not One, forget. it's going to bring out the crowds. Let's because not forget. They want to see this is it. the same team. This is the same program, football program. I know they got new helmets from the Detroit Lions. Oh, really? Yeah, a couple years ago. So they, they donated uh, helmets to them. That's yeah. awesome. You know, and um, you know, and I think that's a great thing that they. Yeah, did. That's that is great. Really. Where can we see the photos? Um, we could see the photos. Um, if you go on the Twitter, it should be PHS Athletic Department. Um, I will send the link out later today, and I'll I'll put a I'll release a column on it, and I'll put it on the blog at okay. semi-colon terminal So I'll do that. That's later awesome. Today. Now that's good news. Mm-hmm, that is really that's a great thing to start <laughs> your day. You know what it I mean? It is. That's a good. That's it a, is a that's beaut- a positive news story. Um, for this Pontiac, program yep. and Pontiac and all that good stuff. So it's always good to have positive. Yeah, it's always uh, beautiful info. to have a beautiful. I mean, like, and when you see when I seen it, I'm going like, oh my goodness, it is <laughs> so beautiful. You know, it is so beautiful for a team that really needs it in the worst yeah. way possible. You no, know I, what I mean, I agree. Yeah, um, right there with you, Sammy. Mm-hmm. So now let's go from football news a little bit. Let's go to basketball. Um, obviously, um, the one of the stories is um. Is at Farmington. Um, Coach Terrence Porter. Um, he um stepped down. Um, he wrote a tweet. Um, he wrote a tweet on um on um couple. It was before the Friday. It was before the Friday. Um, that um, it was on the Friday that I actually was up north, and I couldn't believe that um he um he was stepping down, and I and um and, and um he said, "Quote: I have officially resigned as the head boys basketball coach at Farmington High School." I want to thank the administration, community, and staff at Farmington for a great 11 years. I want to thank all the players for allowing me to coach you. Thank you for, to the many supportive parents. That's what the tweet read. Okay. So in his 11 years at Farmington, Porter was 128 and 108 at Farmington. He took over the job for Coach Steve Norgrove. Of course, Norgrove is now at Stony Creek. Um, you know, when you look at what he's done, I mean, he's led Farmington basketball to – some double digit wins. Um, you know, they've he's he's done a wonderful job at Farmington. And yeah. you look at um of course, um, you look at where the program is at now. I mean, last year they had a really difficult year in the red. They did. Um of course they um did have to overcome the um departures of Jaden Akins and Terrell Humes, who um left the um program to That's go to right. prep schools. That's right, I forgot about that. There was rumors now that Robert Davis could leave to go to a prep school. Um and that would leave Prince Jackson. And um you know, if that were the case. So when you look at Porter left the program in a good note, but he left the program in a really bad spot. Because now you're looking at the fact that Farmington's going to be in the red again. Yeah. And you're going up against the likes of Ferndale, Clarkston, West Bloomfield, Oak Park, who looks really improved, mm-hmm. um, North Farmington, and then there's Adams. And we know what Adams has. Yes. So when you look at Farmington's situation, this team could be in a whole lot of trouble this year. You know, they could be. You know, and then Porter's leaving, you know what I mean? So, And when coaching, you know, coaches we've seen – Every year, they're leaving or coming and going. Mm -hmm. There's never a good time. No. Right? I mean, uh, yeah, it's unfortunate. This is the timing and uh, the makeup of the team. And if you have, like, the whole prep school thing, just I'm still shaking my head over a lot of it. I know know the kids are looking for opportunities and things, and COVID was kind of the the motivator to say, hey, they're, you know, they're performing uh, at games and practices and stuff out of state, so hey, let's try different things. We saw that on, on uh, a lot mm-hmm. last year, right? Yeah. But there's no good time for a coach to say, I'm stepping down. You no. know? Um, I mean, the worst would be the day before the season begins, of course. But, um, you know, I, I'm going to say they're on the map, but they, that's a solid program. I mean, through, through the. Uh, through the uh, sub varsity levels coming in, right? I mean, they built. That's the big question bu- for me. With I mean, them. he was there long enough to build something. I mean, you have two hundred, you know, hundred plus wins. If you, you want know, to be good, if you want to be, you got. If you want to be in the red, you got to have solid sub varsity programs. Yes. And I know when I looked at the last year's stats, Farmington really struggled, you know, with the sub varsity. Okay. And you know, on. When you're looking at, okay, you're going up against teams like Ferndale, you're going against teams like Clarkston, you got North Farmington, West Bloomfield, Oak Park, Adams. I mean, like, 
that's not an easy that's not going to be easy at all and yeah. when you really look at um you know farmington you know do you think this should have been a team that should be in the white and Ooh. instead in the red that is a big question so i always find it interesting at times when the they decide to shuffle teams mm-hmm. regardless if it's basketball or football mm-hmm. and it's usually after success correct? right but the problem is you have success like let's look at stony creek a lot of success Stony Creek. Every, yep. everybody graduated yeah for the now, most part yeah and now, now you're gonna be in the red now you, so for your for your reward you're going into the red and that's not that to say that they're rebuilding but to be pushed up into that next level of competition. And you're going against the likes of Clarkston, Lake Orion, Oxford, West Bloomfield, South and A&T. Congratulations. Congratulations. You, had, you had a great year mm-hmm. uh, right between the eyes. But, you better be ready. But I know, I know one, Nick Merlo better be ready. But I do know the coaches are like, hey, fine, move us up to the red. That means they are establishing themselves. You know, Their program is taking hold. Mm-hmm. There is success. And the kids – don't you think the kids want to? It's like that is a, hey, we're moving up to the red. Yes, because that is where the top competition is in the mm-hmm. league. And, that's, and you got a lot of proven state champions in that division. That's where you go prove yourself, and right? We've heard coaches it, say that at media day all the time. We oh, want to yeah. go prove ourselves in the red. And I, I just think it's another opportunity. But I still think it's odd. It's like because a high school is so cyclical. I mean – Kids come and go all the time. It's not like, co- well, college is a, a train wreck. But yeah, traditionally, God. you have everybody, you know, on varsity for four years, maybe five. Now, this is, you might get two. Mm-hmm. You know, you got the, the bench warmer who's earning his way to the varsity, you know, the starter status. Mm-hmm. So there's so many unknowns yeah, on the basketball There's a lot of there. unknowns. I mean, like. But yeah, welcome to the red. Hello. Yeah, that's not easy. <laughs> but on Farmington's case, you know. You, I mean, the rumor, the rumors rumbling about um, about um, Robert Davis leaving. Um, that it to go to the preps to go to, um, Robert Davis going leaving to go to a prep school. Um, and then now you know if you lose him, you're gonna have Jack, Paris Jackson there, and you don't have a lot of you don't have a lot of talent in that program. And does that answer? Do you think Farmington should be in the red? Even uh, though they're going to be in the red this year, but the, do you think they should be? See, I mean, going back to what I, to what I said, it's like mm-hmm. the problem is they've had defections. Right. Kids leaving and not due to graduation, right? Mm-hmm. So that is a whole nother. Yeah. Uh, you know. Whole other can uh, of worms. Problem. Mm-hmm. Right? Do they belong... I would say, hey, they're in the red. You got to deal with that. I'm not going to say if they belong or not. We're going to find out. We're going to find out. And you know, just like some other teams, they might surprise you, mm-hmm. right? And I mean, like, don't sleep on Adams. Don't sleep on Oak Park. I mean, like, don't sleep on West Bloomfield. No. I mean, like, and to and going back to your mantra, play the better teams, you get better. Yeah. Right. So I would say, yes, they belong in the red. Okay. Uh, they may be shuffled out after a season. Maybe. But uh, we will see. And then let's look at, okay, who do you think would replace a, um, Ger- a, um Terrence Porter? I mean, obviously, the athletic director at Farmington is Tim McLash. Of course, he was a former growth basketball coach at Harrison. So I kind of thought about maybe two guys that really okay. would be really interesting fits. Um, Jareel Hogan, is a, is a, he used to coach Adam Harrison. Um, until they closed down. Um, did you see what they did to Harrison? No. Um, they turned it into it's a, a community, com- center community center. center. Yeah. They turned it into a community center. Yeah, you, know, you they can't left, tear that down. They they let the athletic facilities alone. Um, they but the inside of that it looks beautiful. It looks absolutely updated. Beautiful. So a community center is always great to have. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, uh, place to go. You can have uh, workshops and classes and stuff. It just enhances the community. Mm-hmm. And they uh, yeah, created basketball courts, gyms. Awesome. I mean, like, you know, and it's absolutely beautiful there. Yeah. But Drew Hogan would be a really interesting fit because he was the last coach, at, basketball coach at Harrison. Um, I don't know if he knows Tim McLash very well. I don't know if they know each other real well. Okay. I know he was a JV coach last year. Um, He is he works in the Farmington School District. 
Um, but another name that's been really interesting to me is Stepan Wilson. Okay. Um, Wilson is the current coach at Hazel Park. Um, he's led the Vikings. Um, he's led rebuilding projects before, and Hazel Park. We know um, that's been a um, that was a train wreck since um, <laughs> the 2018 year. Remember that year when they had um, when they when they were really good. Remember yeah. when they were the number two ranked team in the state going up against Clarkston, and uh, look what happened there. Um, but they were not the same team after that game. No, no, um, no. So when you look at Wilson, um, that is another name. He used to be an assistant at um, Hazel Park. Um, no, he used to be an assistant, at, you know, head coach at Harrison. Um, led the um, girls team there at Harrison for a time. Um, I think he coached the boys team as well. So when you really look at Stepan Wilson, you know, he could be a guy that could be a yeah. possible fit there at Farmington. I mean, like, there's there, there's just two names that are considered. I know Coach Tim McLash um, has got a list um, of candidates, you know, who he'll be looking to interview. I know that he just inter- he just got the um, – did the football gig a couple um, weeks, couple yeah. mu- weeks ago, obviously. Um, yeah. You know, and he went in-house with that. Um, so A lot of changes down there. A lot of changes at Farmington. I mean, obviously, you know, what's been going on down there. I mean, like, um, but it's something to keep a very close eye on. Yeah. Obviously. I mean, like, and then when you look at the other um, vacancies, obviously, in the boys' side of things, I mean, we're, I'm going to split up the boys and the girls. Um, the boys' side of things, of course, Rochester. I want to hear your thoughts on Nick Ebola at Rochester. Um, we talked about him. Um at Adam, I mean, when um, when um, he used to be at Warrenwood's Tower, um, and now you have in he's a, he's a he's a teacher at Rochester High School. We've seen this before, and I didn't like what he did at Adams. A couple, he was there for about a week, <laughs> and then he left. I didn't like that, but yeah, that was. But uh, yeah, you look at Ebola taking over for Vance Kirkwood, um, you know, and I think this. Well, is what's a, your initial thought? I mean, for you, what was your impression? Well, when Ebola. I, I had a feeling, you know, I didn't like how um, they treated Vance Kirkwood at Rochester. I didn't like how they, um, for, I mean, to me it was a, um, I don't know what happened over at Rochester, um, but um, but I'm really happy for Vance Kirkwood, though, that he um, got, a, he's the new girls basketball coach at Sterling Heights Stevenson. So yeah. I was really happy about that. Um, but with the bowl coming in there, I just thought, you know, it was, I had a feeling he would be the guy yeah. that he, um, you know, teaches in the district. Um, he, um, he, he was just ready to get back into into coaching, you know, yeah. and you know. And we've seen this before. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of uh, coaches uh, have teaching backgrounds, yeah. right? I mean, a coach is a teacher, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. And uh, we see it. Like Orion's head football coach, he's a John an Black instructor. Sox instructor at Walden. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, gym gym instructor and uh, health and all that good stuff. And then you have, you know, we've seen it all over. And I I think those are I know at Troy, especially Gary Fralick teaches in the, teaches PE. Um, I just think those are good mm-hmm. choices because when you have a co- obviously performance matters, mm-hmm. right? And what are they going to do on the court or the field or whatever? But Kirkwood won a gold championship last year. You know, for Rochester, he won the gold title. You know yes. what I mean? And um, you know, so. but there's there's always stuff you don't know, right? Right? And you, we're we're looking on the surface. We're we're even beyond the surface. We're out here with binoculars, going, "What's going on over there?" Mm-hmm. Right? Um, I know you have your little uh, newsy guys around, giving you, feeding you information, um, and you know, but you can only guess. And I'd rather not guess. I'd say. Yeah. Usually moves like that where you have the coach in-house, or at least who's teaching in the district, it's it's usually a good good deal. And then when you look at Rochester, obviously they do return five star five players who um led a course by Matt Stone. Yeah. And you look at Rochester, um, you know, a lot of people look at Rochester as possibly the team to beat in the blue division. Even though you got Berkeley, Oxford, yeah, Sophie A and T's in there. That's a statement um, too. That, See, yeah, that, I mean, see yeah. home in there as well. I mean, Troy Athens as well. I mean, so coming like, into a decent situation. It's coming into a decent situation. You know what I mean? And then you look at program strength is still a concern for me when I look at a bolus team. Program strength is a big concern for me. Yeah. Um, and teams in that division. I think Berkeley's going to be very good this year. I think Athens. You know, 
even though they lost their bigs in um they lost their two bigs in um Jacob Thornton and Michael Justice. Um Oxford, you know they're gonna scrap and battle every night. <laughs> see home. See home, you know, they're gonna battle every night. And then you look at um A and T, they they're coming down from the white division, you know, uh-huh. to the blues. So when you really look at the at Rochester, the blues not gonna be an easy division for them. No. So when you really look at you know what a bowl is going to have to deal with. Obviously, um, do you think it's uh, was it? Uh, well, last year I think it was one of the most wide open groups. The gold, yeah, was really wide yeah. open. Yeah, I mean, and so now, uh, what do you think moving forward? Well, when you look at the gold now, you got, and then you add Harper Woods to the mix. That's right. And uh, if you're just joining us, Harper Woods, yeah, OAA, in OAA starting in the winter, new member starting in the winter. That that's wild. That's. Mm-hmm. That's going to be so strange. Yeah, to see them in the OA yeah. and in the Gold Division, driving up to Oxford, play a game or two. Imagine if you I have, mean, if imagine if Oxford had to play Harper Woods. That is a drive. Yeah, it's a heck of a drive. I would love to see footage or whatever the notes from the meeting that says, "Hey, how about Harper Woods? You know, how did that come about? We need to get an OAA commissioner in get- here. Who's who's a Who's a commissioner of the OA? I don't know. <laughs> is there even one? A I committee? I, I would love. There is a committee, yeah. I would but, love to hear. But I would love to. I'm curious to see how that worked out with Harper Woods yes. in the league. I mean, like, I'm curious to see how that would go. Um, yeah, but anyway. I think that, you know, I think that, um, you know, just when you look at, and Harper Woods is looking for a boys basketball coach because their coach stepped down a couple weeks ago. And also at Ferndale University, those are the uh, um, yeah, those are the coaching searches right now um, going on. But Ferndale University is actually not not a bad job. It's pretty, no, I I mean like they got some good players on that team. They got some experience. Um, the Amigos, their team that to definitely keep an eye on. And yep. then Harper Woods, they got a lot of experience coming back. So when you look at yeah. the Gold Division, you got Harper Woods there. Pontiac's going to be a very solid team again this year. Um, I know Coach Damon O'Neill really well, um, you know, but then you don't know with Royal Oak, you don't know with, um, you know, you don't know with, um, you know, Royal Oak's going to be a big mystery team to watch. Avondale, I think, is going to be better than people think. I really, I'm really high on Avondale. And then you look at, um, of course, um, Ferndale University, and, you know, and I think it could be really interesting to see what happens. Yeah. It, anytime you have... The changes. See, and this is the fun part, right? This mm-hmm. is the fun part of the year. This is where we get to guess and um, predict or pretend to predict <laughs> what's going to happen. This is the fun bit. Oh, yeah. Right? I mean, um, when you, we sat down and you said, yeah, seven and sevens are going on for football. I was like, oh, because. Well, seven on seven to me, you know, it's not like it's not like. I know, but it's tr- but for me, it says football is around the corner. That is true. Right and mm-hmm. and you go wow we're in July, we're in July and yeah. let's go let's go I'm re- <laughs> yep and, and then you th- know there's just there's just something about football man it, there's something about it Sam would you agree oh absolutely especially with the smell of fall in the air um oh not yet I go I we get the smell of tornadoes and thunderstorms but the the idea of ooh they're it's happening they're getting together they're getting the together. kids are working hard and. This just it just makes you excited for when mm-hmm. we start smelling that. Fall. Yep. And Harper Woods <laughs> has got a pretty good football program. You do know, they? they got a really good football program. I mean, like, so I'm curious to see how they do next year in yeah. the way. I how, mean, like, so and not to, and how will that work? I mean, they're they're gold in basketball. They're gold in basketball. Um, I think they could be a white division white t- team okay. next year. I really think they will be a white division team. All right. Um. But I know how good that program is. They got some really good players in that program down there in Harper Woods. I mean, like just wild. Yeah, and just. then, <laughs> and then you look at obviously, um, Ferndale University. Obviously, um, you know, you know, and you know, in this in the fall in football, they co op with Ferndale, and we know how good that program is. Yes. Been. Um. So I'm curious to see. You know what I mean? Like a lot of interesting storylines around the state. Obviously, um. The the rumor about Saginaw Saginaw Arthur Hill merging into one really? school, yeah, that could be that could really happen. Um, I know that there's been talk about that up in Saginaw. 
Wow, um, uh, they attendance could, is getting to that point. Mm-hmm, that they should... could merge, you know what I mean? That could end one of the most legendary rivalries in um, the basketball in the yeah. state with Saginaw and Saginaw Arthur Hill. You wow. Know? Well, we saw it, in, you know, mm-hmm. in Farmington, yeah. right, with Harrison, Harrison and stuff. We've seen it. Yeah, we've seen it with Harrison. I mean, obviously. Wow. Um, wow. Now, let's go to girls, obviously. Um, of course, we've had some coaching moves there. Um, girls basketball. basketball. Yep. Obviously, Adams, um, Paul Malberg. Um, uh, Joe Malberg, he took over the reins at, um, Adams, of course, taking over for Shea Lewis. I wanted to see your thoughts on this. Um, I know you watched my previous podcast about Malberg's hire and why I really like this hire. You well, know? it's, it's, it's always hard. Like we're talking about mm-hmm. coaches this time of year. We have, mm-hmm. I'm not going to say the re, the, uh, revolving door of coaches. That's not, no. that's not an accurate thing. No. But uh, coaches come and go, and this is the time of year to see that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'll say it just – I don't know basketball the way you know basketball or the coaches coming in. But it's – for me, it can be an exciting time because sometimes coaches can bring new energy, mm-hmm. right? They bring I think Robert system. will bring new energy to Adams. I really think he will bring new energy right? is, to is, this is, a, is this a hire that is looking to push the team – to a new level or is it a rebuild right and i don't think it's a rebuild i just you know think if it's that, just a you know you know but but malbrick what he did at um sterling heights parkway christian you know he had a um he had a real tough year last year i mean like but he did win 15 games his second year in his three years there i mean he won 30 games mm-hmm. i mean so when we look at malbrick i just think that it's going to take some time for him to get the program going in the right direction. Yeah. Um, you know, they did lose a lot. Um, obviously, when you lose players like Maddie Delinga, Lauren Petersmark, and um, names and we've been talking Elizabeth about Blaine, for years, that's going to be tough. To, that's going to be tough to lose. I mean, yeah. like obviously there. Um, so when you look at the Malberg hire, I kind of I do like this hire. I really okay. like the hire. Um, the hire I really like is at Clarkston. Um, with yeah. Aaron Good now. Um, yeah, you mentioned that before we're on the air. Yeah. Yep. Take. With Aaron Good now, I really like that he's taken over um, for Coach John Wire. The reason why I say this is because there's really not a lot of change you can do because I know he knows the girls really well, especially at the Michigan Pride AU team. Yes, um, which the connections are through the roof. The connections are for the roof, and you know, there's not a lot of changes are going to be over there at Clarkson. I know, and I you ta- wouldn't expect it. You, no, you don't expect Clarkson to go. Yeah, we're gonna change everything. And no, and I don't didn't expect. There's that. no reason to. There's no reason to with the success they've been having. I mean, now I've heard a lot about their non-conference possibilities <laughs> about maybe going west a little bit into Livingston County okay. and playing some really tough teams there. All right, um, like a like a Howell, a Heartland, Brighton, um, maybe Hudsonville. I mean, like, those are some tough teams out in the West. I mean, like, in Livingston County, West. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Hudsonville recently won the state title th- this year, Division of State title. And then you look at Heartland's a proven power. Heartland's a proven power. Um, you look at, obviously, um, you know, maybe playing Grand Blank. Grand Blank's going to be very good in girls this year. I mean, like. They always seem to be good. They always, <laughs> well, the boys' basketball team won a state title. Yeah. And their baseball team won a state title. So that was really interesting. I didn't expect that to happen. Yeah. But other than that, I just think when you look at when you look at Clarkston, um, they're gonna be good. But the schedule that they're maybe playing, they're not conference. And then you add the red schedule. They might need Scooby Doo to come over there. <laughs> I'm serious. Give them some Scooby snacks. Uh but but that, that schedule is going to be brutal. It's true, but doesn't that go to? I mean, what's the makeup of the team this year? Oh, they're very good. I like Maddie Sikorsky a lot. Izzy right, Haley's really it's improved. Not a, it's not a bunch of newbies to no, the varsity no, ranks. No, no, no. So, believe me, the coaches know what they're doing. And mm-hmm. to have, why do you schedule that way? Especially if you have an elite team, to or get you better in the postseason. Exactly. If you take your lumps in the regular season out of conference, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything, but it's going to get you better. It's going to get you. It's going to get you. You know. You, so you really look at it. The record might be very deceiving. Oh, absolutely. It'll be very yes. deceiving. This is where you know we talked about this all the time. Yeah. What's the eyeball test? Yeah. And you can tell within the first five minutes of a game. 
Oh, yeah, okay. Well, Clarkson girls basketball, I could tell it the eyeball test in about two minutes. <laughs> I know. I mean, like. Okay, you got me by three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know what I mean? It's it, an elite team or a team that is seasoned mm-hmm. like they are. Mm-hmm. It, it's not shocking, not a surprise to go out. Now, we, you go to, like, a team like Oxford. When we're talking football in Oxford, their schedule? Yeah. Completely different. That's going to – that's <laughs> if you look at that schedule, the tell, Oxford's tell got – I mean, tell them. I mean, oh, my. So, I mean, <laughs> these are polar opposite, ex, ex, you know, experiences here. The Clarkson – we know what they're going to be. The women's team is solid. We know they're going to be. And they're Ox- going to be competitive. Yeah. Oxford, Oxford's- they got experience when you look at Oxford football. They got experience, but that schedule just goes like. It's insane. It, yeah. It's brutal. We got to get Zach Line on here. We got <laughs> to get, we gotta get Oxford coach Zach Line on here. I think he can definitely do it. I mean, like, I think it'll be really good. Well, it, we'd lo- I'd love to hear about the team. I mean, oh, yes. last year was such an odd fall that, mm-hmm. you know, we we were talking to the coaches when everything was shut down, mm-hmm. and that worked out great. It worked out really And we well. learned a lot about their teams and, you know, uh, you know, what are they doing to get the kids through the disappointment. But then it came roaring back. It and came we had roaring a, back, and we right? had a, we we had had a great a crazy season. season. Now it went to January. <laughs> it did. It did go to January. But so. that was fun, you that know. Was so and much fun. I was so happy that it, you know we've we've talked about it a thousand times. We're so happy that it, it, it happened. Mm-hmm. And the way it did, it was exciting. There were stories. It was fantastic. There were storylines being told, everything and all that. I mean, but like, with Oxford's schedule, dude. I mean, this is different. Uh, we're we're coming back to some. I'm knocking on wood, brother. Some normalcy. We're yeah. looking at things, you know. If everything, everybody's doing their job still, you can you still have to be vigilant. Yes. Because this thing's still going on. Right. But uh, it's looking positive, and we mm-hmm. want to keep that positive. You know, hopefully it keeps going the way it's going. Yes. And the systems are in place to protect these they kids. They are in place. Yes. This is a different fall for Oxford. Yes. I'm, I'm almost saying that this is. They got experience. This is, I would almost say this is season one for the, the line. Uh, for the line era? Yeah. I mean, last, they I, changed helmets. They changed. I mean, like they changed uniforms. Helmets and everything. are gonna score. Oh, they, they changed hel- helmets. It went from blue to yellow now. Okay, I can see that. I mean, like I helmets think, aren't gonna score you touchdowns. They got a they got a very good quarterback <laughs> in um, Brady Carpenter. They got a good team. I really like that team that they. I really like what Oxford has. To be honest, with you, I really like what they have. I mean, yeah. like um, even though you know they got a lot of experience. I mean, like they're. I think. Oxford's going to surprise some people. I really think that this Wildcat team is going to surprise some folks. That's why I'm saying maybe this is year one. COVID was always an asterisk year. Yeah, it might, yeah, it might it's have It's always bizarre because yeah. there were teams that some teams didn't play or off or on and rescheduled. I mean, how many times did we see the schedule go, oh, that's not happening. Mm-hmm. They're off the schedule. They're staying home this week. We're playing them. We're not playing. You know, mm-hmm. it was just let's get it done for the, for the mental – yeah, for the mental, the kids. emotional aspect of, these, of the kids. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this like, is different. This is different. We're coming back. Mm-hmm. This is the mm-hmm. as normal as we've been in a while. Mm-hmm. So um, now we gotta go. <laughs> yeah. So now let's go from um, let's go from football. We gotta talk about the Grove situation, the girls um, girls basketball situation. Oh, jeez. Um, you know um. So does every is everybody aware? I mean, I know you've been following this story for a number of weeks. Yes, I've been following the story for weeks. And have you reported on? I I haven't posted on the blog anything yet, on the podcast. Antoine Simpkins, anything on this yes, show? I've, I've, you've talked about it. Some? I've talked about it some, but not okay. real much. All right. But, so what, how about you give a refresher for those who are uh, just tuning in? Well, girls, girls basketball, of course. I'm um, sending. Um, you know, um, the um Antoine Simpkins, um, their coach, of course, um, was let go. Let go. And, you know, and, um, you and know, only had, and after one, after season. one season went six and eight, but he won him a district championship. But, you know, but there was a falling out, you know, there was a falling out and I know it's been getting a lot of attention on Twitter. Um, and, um, you know, and he's gotten a lot of support on it, you yeah. know, and, you know, he just sent out a statement on Thursday, um, how he was forced out, I will, um, you know, and when reading it, it was, I was stunned, you know, just stunned. And I sent it to you, mm-hmm. and, 
Yeah, it was you, hard to describe. And you know, uh, we're, if we're media, we're going to try to be a media outlet. Right. There's right? always two sides. To There's the story. always two sides, and and, and that's we're, we're getting one side of it. We're getting one side of it. If if what is what took place. It's true. It's true based on the statement from coach that my my goodness, it's it's like the extreme version of the parents taking parent over coup. the team and parent parent coup. Uh, parent coup and saying, yeah, um, you know, it, it, and it, it doesn't sound like a, you know, based on that statement, it doesn't sound like a large group, yes, of parents. It just seems like a small group, if not just one family. But we have but a, but it's well, again this is one side we don't yeah. have the other every but but, but the it's... kids lose out in this they yeah. lose out on this I mean like you know and you look at that team you know Groves you know they had a lot of they 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 were an up and coming team yeah I mean you look at it, obviously I mean, they may still be up and coming they still may be but you know but the having question, this sort of distraction dis- on dis- you distractions a good. But it's also disruption. It's a disruption. You know, it's not like, hey, oh, you're, I'm over here. I get, you know, distracted. This is a disruption. This is a serious and disruption. And it's amongst the adults, you know, that are impacting these kids complaining about. It's just, if true, you know, mm-hmm. and the alleged uh, incidences of how this came down to have Coach removed down there. Mm-hmm. If true, it's like it's almost the epitome of modern day parenting I've going seen it. I've seen, I've with seen, sports i've seen this happen on many occasions i've seen this happen you know what i mean where you know but you know you gotta be careful you gotta be very careful yeah. i didn't post it on the blog yeah. you know what i mean i just wanted to just have well a it, has this been posted on twitter it is on twitter right, right. now he's so, in a statement but so i'm he, not going so that co- far. coach released the statement mm-hmm. it's out there in the public forum yep uh, if you want to read it, go ahead. Go we're ahead. Not, we we're not going to go much into we, it. We won't go blow by blow. But it no. is. But like you said, it, and Sammy, I'll give you credit. Usually, you know, most of the time, if not all the time, your analysis and thoughts are always with the kids, mm-hmm. right? right? You, you being a, th- a throwing coach and having worked with worked with ki- students and ch- uh, kids all these years, mm-hmm. it always goes down to the. It comes back to the kids, right? It's what How are they going to be impacted? Are What's gonna... going on? Are they being, you know, giving the right direction? Is this, this instance to me just. We got to keep a very close eye on it. It I, just. It, it's tough. It's just. It's tough. It's unnecessary. It's too. unnecessary. I, it's you know, tough. If, if, if that is if, the one side. Again, there's two sides. There's so. always two sides to the story. So that's one of the reasons. So that's why I've been calling the Grove situation very toxic. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The last couple of weeks. Um, I just wanted to. um put that down on every don't you think based on that statement uh, uh, we encourage uh, listeners to go out and hunt it down find it read it just so Mm -hmm. i mean we're we're trying to play you know this is usually good news (laughs) right you know but that's the um but But don't you um, think that with this instance mm -hmm. it'll make it difficult for the next coach coming in i think it will or somebody thinking about going to the program or i think it will because you know you don't know what's gonna happen you know what i mean and you can get tossed yeah. That easily. Yeah. I mean, or I should one, say easily. But. After one year? Yeah. After one year? And a district you know, title. And a district title. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so that's, like you said, Sammy, you have, you've been following this story. You're going yep. to continue to follow it. I'm going to follow I'm going to keep a very close eye on and it. And I'm um, assuming they're looking for a new hire, which. i am be curious to see, see what happens. how long that takes. i am be very curious to see how that goes. Um, Maybe it's one of those instances where they already had someone in mind. I don't remember know. we've we've heard that before. We've heard that before. They hire that's somebody. something to yeah. really look at. Um, another job we got to keep an eye on is at Ferndale. I mean, Ferndale. Yeah. You know, here's a positive. You know, I was really encouraged, obviously, with Ferndale. Um, you know that they're going to restart their basketball program. Yeah. Um, after one year where they were just um the uh women's team, correct? yeah, the women's team, yeah. The girls basketball. Team. They didn't field one. They correct? didn't field one last year, no. But you know, Juan Rickman, the athletic director, sent out a um, you know, a tweet to MI Prep Zone, and um, you know, about the job offering available. I sent out a um, post a column on it, wrote a column on it, you know, and um, you know, so when you look at Ferndale basketball, I mean, like obviously we know what's going on with the boys' basketball program. <laughs> yeah. You know, they they went to Division II State semifinal last yeah. year. 
So when you really look at this job, I mean, Ferndale, you got a great athletic director in Sean Butler. You got, I mean, you got, the question for me for Ferndale is going to be is program strength. Yes. Um, so um, what Especially is, with a year off. Yeah, especially with a year off. I mean, Pontiac's the same way. I, Pontiac is the didn't same have, way. Didn't have enough uh, participants. Didn't have enough participants. So when you really look at Ferndale, obviously, um, Ferndale, you know, this is, I think this could be a good, could fit for somebody. You know what I mean? To take over a team, basically start from scratch. I mean, like, you know, it's a great opportunity. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, think about this. If you're like a new coach, you know what I mean, looking for an opportunity to lead your own program, this is the place for you to do it. I mean, like, you got, I mean, they got a great, great, Bat, great facilities down there. I mean, they got great. Um, you know, you look at great ob- fan base. Great fan base. You know, obviously very supportive. Very supportive. I mean, very like very loud. <laughs> yes, very loud. <laughs> and I really like the um direction of Fernie. I really like the direction that um, you know, that they're going. I mean, like I really like the direction that athletic director Sean Butler took. You know what I mean? That um, to put the job out there. Yeah. So um. I think that's a good um that's a good good area. You know what I mean? A good place to coach Ferndale. It's an up and coming community. Um, you know, you got it's a it's a great blend of kids, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know. And I said one time a couple weeks ago, I said, you know, if you're Ferndale boys basketball coach Juan Rickman, you know what I mean? Why not be like a a recruiter within the school district, you know, say, you know what? You know, you know, and you know, here's what and, I did not and, know. Yeah. Rickman is also the cross country coach at Ferndale. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That is a combination. That is a great combination. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, but I, I didn't know that. Yeah, Sammy yeah, hit me with knowledge, brother. I just hit you. Now wow, you know. Right between the eyes. Yeah. And now I know. Do 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 do. I have to get that sound effect. Yes, you do. <laughs> but but if you're but uh, but for me. If I had to say a message to want to coach Rickman right now, I'd say, you know what? I would be an advocate to um, recruit some kids within the school and say, why not try girls basketball? I'm why sure, not? I'm I sure. Think he, I think he'll do it. You, you, knowing him or mm-hmm. at least, you know, being a coach like that. and A very successful program like the boys program. Yes. I, I, mm-hmm. You know. He's built program strength, which makes him really yes. happy. And and knows how to do it. So, yes. And, you know, in athletic departments, the the ones that are functioning well, mm-hmm. there is that crossover. They are supporting each other. Each mm-hmm. coach, you know, the coaches know each other. They're usually good friends. And mm-hmm. how how do you need help? How can we help? That's usually the mo, right? Mm-hmm. So if you have a solid athletic department, yes, you know they're going to be working together to try to build that up again. Absolutely, and I think that would be a very. And I think if you're um Coach Rickman, you know what I mean. Why not be an advocate? Bring oh, yeah. in, bring in, bring in kids. I mean, like, um, bring in kids within the school. You know what I mean? To um, to have them try out for basketball, play basketball. You know, develop the forms and have fun. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Have some fun playing. You know yeah. what I mean? You see, I mean, like, you can see the positive influences that sports bring into people. Yes. And I think you know that would be a great thing if a great thing for Coach Rickman to do. You know what I mean? Besides yeah. his gig coaching the boys, you know, why not? Why not bring them? Um, why not? You know what I mean? Because it it can yeah. it, it can help you with your help you with your influence. No, I agree. And the the, the hard part though is being off that year. You're not going to have the sub varsities. You know, you're not going to have those numbers. Right. And that's that's the difficulty going in. But mm-hmm. coming from my experience in high school sports, we were a small small team. Yeah, at Dexter. Yeah, at right? Dexter, yeah, swimming. We didn't even have a pool. Mm-hmm. Nothing. We we're in the farm mm-hmm. country. And I, when I was a was I was a freshman in what 1986, mm-hmm. okay, and that team consisted of, like, I think we had ten guys, mm-hmm. maybe a maybe eleven. Mm-hmm. When you see the pic, there's two, just two rows of us in the school picture. There's mm-hmm. you know we had enough for a relay, a couple of them, right? But but there, we had a, a diver, one, right? And then we had a couple, you know, they're, they're just small, and but the good thing is, like, you you learn. You know, I, that experience for me, we didn't win meets. Mm-hmm. We got blown out. Mm-hmm. We got killed every time. But then you grow and you learn uh, through that adversity. 
mm-hmm. to going to, you know, eventually before I got out of there, we were, you know, we had a state champion diver. We mm-hmm. had state qualifiers. You know, we were beating teams that were like, you're beating us. Division one teams. And mm-hmm. we're this little class B team. And, but it works, right? You yes. can, the character you build, even losing is not a bad thing, right? It makes you tougher. It makes you stronger. Right, mm-hmm. and if you if you know how to lose, then you really appreciate the victories, right? Right, and uh, I know uh, you don't want to lose. No, and we're not encouraging. No, no we're, not, we're not encouraging teams to tank. But what I'm saying is that if you it's it builds your character. Mm-hmm. Adversity is not a bad thing. Yeah, it makes you strong because through the whole your life. Yeah. You're going to face adversity. You're going to face adversity. You're going to face pressures in the real world. You right. know what I mean? Everything's so, not a blue ribbon. No. And, um, you know, so uh, so that's why. I'm, I'm cr- thankful for all those losses. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I am. Because the, the, the victories are so much sweeter. But I am really, really happy for Ferndale. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? Especially I'm glad they're getting the program they're getting going. the program going. Yes. I'm really, really now, now they just gotta now, get a new coach in there. They yep. gotta get a um they gotta get and this is why I told um this is why um I'm encouraging um boys basketball coach Juan Rickman to be like a um saying, Okay, um why not play um why not um to um be like that um that person within the district, you know what I mean, to say, you know, Within the school and say, you know, what's and I encourage the girl, I encourage you guys to play girls basketball. I encourage you to enjoy the experience. You know what I mean? Yeah. You'll be you'll be fine. I yeah. mean, like you know, we don't want to, you know, we don't want to have a program where we just like um just play a couple games and then you know and say that's yep. it. You know and what we, I mean? And we see some other teams around the OA doing that. Like uh, what was it? Track and field at Avondale. They didn't have a big no. We've uh. uh contingent of runners but we see the kids out there competing they're competing and they're out there doing it right they're, out there doing it. Uh, there's they're a, you get having out, fun take a lot of guts to yeah. get out there and run the 3200 meters and we we saw it at districts or uh, at regionals, regionals and the kids are out there doing it right yeah, i mean like it's it's a great experience you know what i mean i encourage i encourage those in ferndale nation you know what i mean eagle nation to um you know to play the to try to pl- try playing girls basketball, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Really, it's a great sport. To, it's a great sport. I, I, I think they're going to be okay. I think they're going to be okay yeah, too. Me too. I mean, they got a great athletic director in Sean Butler. Yeah. Um, they, I mean, like, I got confidence in I'm Fernando. I got real, real strong confidence in them that they can get this. Um, yeah, they can get, get it up this, and running again. Get up and running. And then uh, we're just looking over at Pontiac, hoping the same thing happens. Yeah, Pontiac yeah. will. Yeah, especially you know when you look at, of course, the same thing with Pontiac. Of course, I know Coach Christopher Wright really well. Um, you know, I, I mean think they have a coach in place. It do. was just about numbers. Yeah, it's just about numbers with Pontiac. I mean, like you know, but I I got a lot of confidence in Pontiac. Yeah, yeah. they can, they can get this done. You yeah. know what I mean? You know, I think Pontiac's an up and coming program. Do you have uh, not to change gears, but we're at like fifty three. Really? Uh, yeah. It's going wow. by quick today, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Uh, we've covered so many different topics. I know you have a list in front of you. My early top ten? Do you, Shall we? You sure you want me? I can or should we wait? Are we going to wait? I think we're going to wait. Oh, Sam, I you teased me. I think we're going to wait. Because before, so all the listeners out there, everybody listen. Just before we went on the air, mm-hmm. he, he teases me with the list. He goes, look what I have. And he held it up. I'm going, ooh, I'm looking at it. And we actually started a discussion going, oh, wow, really? You know, and, like, actually arguing about it. And we're like, okay, this will be a good topic. And now he pulls. I it's, pull. it's like, here, would you like an ice cream, little uh, yeah, kid? And he goes, nope. Yeah, nope. No ice cream. <laughs> but I'll just say this. There are some, there are some listings on there yeah. that is going to uh, invoke some really interesting, really interesting debate. debate. And I think, you know, there's one team that there's – we forgot to, I forgot to mention one football team on here that what? I'm keeping a real close eye on, and that is Groves yeah. football. Okay, because Groves is a team that they got a very good receiver in Jaden Magnum, and I'm really high on him. Question's going to be is how things are going to work for Groves. I've heard a lot of people saying Groves is going to be good, going to be good again. So okay. that's a team I'm really keeping a close eye on. But there are some teams in the blue that and there are some other teams I'm keeping an eye on too. Like Rochester's mm-hmm. a, a team I'm keeping a real close eye on. 
We already talked Stony Creek earlier. Yes. Oxford's getting a lot of love from you and I. Hey, yes. And um, Stony Creek's getting a lot of love. You know why? Why? In my opinion, it's like when Oxford is a strong team, doesn't that make everything around, at least the Orion area, Clarkston, doesn't it make it more fun? Sure. Having a strong Oxford club coming in, nothing like the crowds coming into Lake Orion or going up the road to Oxford when those teams are humming along. Sure. But we talked about this with Rochester. Remember when Rochester had a chance to beat Adams, yes. you know what I mean, in, um, in the postseason? That was that would have been the first time since 1996, and then they go in and they get blown out. I know. I still can't believe that. I can't either. I, I... And then you look at, of course, Berkeley winning their first playoff game since 20. 20- it's 2013 yeah. when they knocked off Royal Oak. I mean, like 2016, I believe, when they knocked off Royal Oak. I mean, like, I mean, there's a lot of great storylines to look at with football. Yeah, we're. In, I'm interested to see if they can continue. These teams that had success during the COVID era, we'll call Oak it the Park. <laughs> Oak Park from 0 and 6 the, to. Yeah, but was that success? I mean, they, they got in because, because they Because everybody them. made the playoffs. That should have been your question. So, what's the, oh, the communications about. director up at MHSA? John Johnson, long time. Yeah, he's, he's retired. been there forever. He retired. Mm-hmm. He was a great uh, communicator with us here and in, in all these different community media stations. But he's retired. Who's the new guy? I think it's George jo- Kimberly, uh, Jeff Kimberly, Jeff Kimberly, or something like that. Yeah. So we need to get a hold of that guy <laughs> and talk about that. Yeah. I I responded an email to him. I mean, like I sent a I sent an email about you football, know when basketball, every, everybody when basketball, getting yeah. everybody getting in for football again. That was awesome. That was really good. I mean, now they're going back to the. Um, I don't like it. Why don't you like it? I like that everybody you got in. Well, at first I didn't strength the schedule though. At first I didn't dig it, but I'm like Oak Park wouldn't have happened. I know Oak Park wouldn't have happened if everybody didn't get in the playoffs. But you think strength of schedule? You need we need to go back to the. We need to go back uh, to strength of schedule. I don't know. There's an argument, dude. I I know there's a good debate topic here on this. I really liked. I, I was hesitant last year, but I dug it. I really liked it. I did too. You know what I mean? I mean, look at look at basketball. Everybody makes the playoffs. You look at, of course, volleyball. Everybody makes the playoffs. I mean, I mean, the volleyball districts are very weird this year. You look at like Lake Orion and Clarkson are split up this year, and yeah, and then you look at um, and then you look at obviously um, there's some others. You know, Berkeley had a huge renaissance last year in volleyball. I yes. mean, like, you know, and then of course um, I mean, so we've seen. I it. get I get so many complaints from everybody about I, um. I really liked how they incorporated it mm-hmm. into the regular season. Yes, right. That's part of the total game. Yes, you're going to lose some games, but but I really liked it, Sam. I know you did. <laughs> I know you did. And a lot I of thought people, it was I awesome. thought a lot of people liked it, you know? I thought a lot of people liked it, but now everybody's going back to the... Yeah, same old whatever. But, you know, but they don't <laughs> But they don't look at it from a different perspective, obviously. When you look at 8-1 and one teams, you know, if yeah. you finish 8-1, and one, you may still might not get in the playoffs because you're strength of schedule. Yes. You know, if you're like yes. a seven and two team, you still might not get in the playoffs because of your strength schedule. So, yes. you know, so it's really important to play those type of tough games, you know, to really help you with your strength of schedule. We know. Yeah. And I mean, because we saw Cupcakeville. There's teams that play Cupcake. Yeah. Get the blowouts. Yeah. Have the bench play for three quarters of the game. Mm hmm. But yeah, I mean, I still liked everybody in, though, Sammy. I know you do. I know you do. <laughs> End, ending on a fiery note. Yeah, you just ended on a fiery note. <laughs> All right, now everybody, I'm going to sign off here. We had a lot of great emotions today. We had happy, sad, confused, confused <laughs> mind boggled, everything. Bamboozled. Bamboozled, everything. <laughs> All right, now everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Um, take care, everybody, and see you all next week, everybody. See you, Sam. Boy, now produced by Sammy Termina. The views on this show are his and mine alone. I'd like to uh, be a guest on the OA now. Give us a call at 248-393-1060. We'd love to get some sort of fan reaction, especially with YouTube Live coming in. There is a chat function we're playing with. What? Really? That's it for this week's edition of OA Now. We'll see you next week. See ya. See ya.